Good evening, everyone. Our Bible passage for this evening's reflection is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. And we'll be reading from verses 17 to 25. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were shocked, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he were not born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth. I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. family is blessed by having two fur kids. We have Ella the cat who is a tortoiseshell and is, is extremely vocal. And then we have Daisy the Labrador Cross who is a truly gentle soul. Ella has this intriguing practice of not wanting to eat the dry pellets out of her bowl even if there are pellets in the bowl. And this is a certain number present. Most times the addition of one or two pallets will be enough to get her eating and then she will finish the bowl. It's almost as if she knows how many pallets are there. As if she counts them. Today's reading is all about provision. Indeed the word for our reflection is provision. 
Our reading takes us to the Last Supper. We see Jesus sitting at the table with his 12 disciples, enjoying a meal together. Halfway through the meal, Jesus picks up the flat, unleavened loaf of bread, breaks it, and distributes, them, distributes it amongst his disciples, saying, This is my body. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In like wise, he takes the cup and distributes it and passes it around with these words. This is my blood shed for you as part of the new covenant. Take and drink so that your sins may be forgiven. In this simple gesture, Jesus, the Lamb of God, shows us the provision that God has made for our forgiveness of our sins. There's no guesswork. This provision is complete. We do not have to do anything. We simply have to arrive, admit that we have done wrong, ask for our sins to be forgiven, and accept the gift. No strings attached. Two Bible readings came to mind as I pondered on this passage. The first one came from John chapter 1 verse 29 and 36. The amazing tale of John the Baptist recognizing Jesus from afar. Yes, they were cousins. But John knew that Jesus truly was the Lamb of God and publicly stated it in these verses. In Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, Paul reminds the Corinthian church that they have to give up their sin, leave behind their sinful life. And he likens their sin to leavened bread, bread that is baked with yeast. And he says to them, embrace the new life without sin. Embrace the bread that is baked without yeast, the unleavened bread, the flat bread. As we journey with Jesus towards the cross, I believe it is vital that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we remind ourselves of the results of God's provision of Jesus as the Lamb of God. Rest in peace. How wonderful it is to approach the cross laden with sin. Kneel there and ask forgiveness and arise sin and guilt free. Our past failings, our guilty feelings, the things connected with our bad behavior that keep us awake at night, all washed away in the flood of Jesus' blood as it was shed at Calvary. The hymn writer puts it like this. And I'm going to read three verses of hymn 201. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Evangel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. O dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Our second short point reconciliation and full forgiveness of our sin. For us to be reconciled with God, Jesus, the Lamb of God, had to die. God provided his most precious son as a gift, undeserved, an action which not only cost God a great deal, but showed us God's infinite love, mercy and grace. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 reminds us that we who were once far away from God have been brought near 
by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can approach God in prayer. We can walk humbly with our God because we are reconciled. We have become daughters and sons of the creator of the world. In 368, a hymn written by Charles Wesley gives us these beautiful words. My God is reconciled. His pardoning voice I hear. He owns me for his child. I can no longer fear. With conscience, sorry, with confidence, I now draw near. And Father, Abba, Father, cry. In the town of Woden in Germany stands a church with a very impressive tower. And on that tower there is a carving of a lamb. The story behind the carving goes like this. While the church tower was being built, one of the workmen slipped and fell off the scaffolding. And as he fell down, there was nothing to stop his fall. And he landed on the road below. His fellow workmen rushed down to see if he was all right. But at that moment of his falling, a flock of passing sheep was being herded underneath the tower. As this man fell, he landed on a single lamb. The lamb broke his fall. The lamb was killed. But the man survived because of this lamb. As they carved this picture of the lamb onto the tower, we are reminded of the provision of the lamb of God. The sacrifice for you and for me. The Lamb of God who took our sin. The Lamb of God that took our sin and washed it away. Never to be thought of or heard of again. May we this Easter watch the Lamb. Amen. <laughs>